Good afternoon. At this time, I'd like to call the South Union Township regular monthly meeting for October to order. We'll stand for an opening prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you stand, please? <coughs> To the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good item number four, roll call, Mr. Schiffbauer. Present. Mr. Scott. Here. Mr. Vernon here also. Item number five, roadmaster report. I'll take that for us. We're going to have to report for the month of August. Uh, our, our crew hand uh, took 12 loads, uh, did compost 12 days. Uh, sheep skin trail, we worked on it 11 days. Uh, we had the tractor throughout the township nine days in the month of August. Uh, we, we whacked uh, around the guardrails on Wiggins Lane, Dixon Boulevard, Daniel Drive, Brownfield Lane, Brownfield Road by the Cross Creek Development, and, and Big Brownfield. Uh, we used a sweeper truck four days throughout the township. Uh, we weeded uh, Tom Frank House Road Park two times for the month of August. <coughs> month of uh, September, I'm sorry. Uh, we cleaned all inlets throughout the township. We straightened some stop signs and street signs throughout the township. We replaced stop signs at Beerwood Acres and Daniel Drive that were knocked down. Uh, we're still working on the Mulberry Bridge that we had to flood. Uh, at the end, I'll ask Mr. Scott to go into a little bit of detail for us on that and as a report. Uh, we patched uh, our truck garage roof. We have our leak in the roof that uh, was patched. We cleaned out ditches on Buttermilk Lane, Hound Dog, Walnut Avenue. Uh, we picked up tree branches throughout the township. Uh, we cleaned and waxed our trucks on the rain days. We worked on uh, 411 Dev Drive in Craig Meadows. Mr. Scott was down here with the uh, machine trying to figure out where the water is coming into this one large drain pipe we have. Uh, clean out debris along the streams that we were able to reach in throughout the township. Uh, we installed two new inlets on Furnace Road. Uh, we milled and amicite the following areas, Wall Avenue by the Ambest, three different spots, Furnace Road, Carnation Avenue and Loch Lomond Street, Farm Road, Albert Street, Long Ridge Lane. Is that Lane, Mr. Scott? Lane? Uh, two spots on Lindsay Drive, an alley in Leith by the golf course. We tied in a driveway at 25 Apple, uh, Albert Street in Craig Meadows. We put in a curb on uh, Cross Creek. Uh, we raised the curb at the bottom of Bellamy Terrace. Uh, we milled and amortized two spots on Clover Lane and two spots on Balsinger Road and a spot on Dixon Boulevard by Michael Drive. And also we did a couple spots on Wilmack Street. That concludes my report except for... I say Mr. Scott get a little bit of detail about the Mulberry Bridge. Uh, yeah. On uh, the rain, the flood we had on July 28th and 29th, um, as many of you are aware, the retaining wall that held the embankment on the corner of Walnut and Mulberry Street uh, actually fell into the creek. The wall fell over. Um, with Mr. Schiffbauer's connections, he was able to uh, get a gentleman from uh, DEP to come out, look at the wall. It originally was put in by him. And he was able to find us some emergency funding to uh, actually uh, reconstruct the wall and also repair the bridge, the damage to the bridge that, that happened during the flood. Um, the progress right now, we have the wall repaired. Uh, they're actually putting the fence back up today. The bridge is in. I look for the project to be complete by the 1st of November with paving and all. Um, and like I said, uh, Bob pulled an old uh, contact out of his out of his record and was able to, to get that money. And honestly, we wouldn't have been able to afford to repair it right now. We would have had to wait. And uh, so I can't believe that it went through that fast. But also, Mr. Over was involved in, uh, you know, getting the funding and preparing everything. But it, it went together well. And uh, it's not often that, that when you're dealing with a state or federal agency that stuff happens as fast. But... I was really impressed with the way this guy uh, made it happen. So, due to that, we will have the repairs done. Paul, I'm sure you have something. Well, like that. yeah, that's pretty much the way it went. And unlike most state employees, uh, this gentleman actually tried to accomplish something uh, 
uh, using common sense and reason behind his decisions. Uh, but uh, we're pretty well done, and uh, hopefully, like Jason said, the uh, bridge in Mulberry Street will be open for traffic here in a matter of weeks. Anything else, gentlemen? I did mention we worked on the sheet for control 11 days. We'll look at Chip Park into that. more detail later on on the agenda, item number 10. We'll go over that with us. Let's go on to number, number 6 on our agenda. The city department report, Mr. Scott. Uh, yes, sir. Um, during the month of September, um, as I mentioned before in the past, uh, we're continuing to update our GIS system. Uh, we have an intern. He's actually a high school student that... Uh, comes on during work release a couple days a week and he's doing she has on here great progress but he's really doing a great job uh, getting that complete and we hope to have that done by the end of the year uh, we still have 12 recycling fees outstanding so if you're getting a notice please try to uh, take care of that um, with band hole locations for the uh, interceptor lines John's going to touch on that when I'm finished uh, but the grader decided to do a study of all the trunk lines trying to figure out when we have these big rains why the manholes are overflowing and, and uh, you know things are backed up so they decided to spend a decent amount of money that we had in a fund uh, between all three entities to try to figure out what the problem is and if we were able to solve it. It's going to be a long process to get it solved but at least we're taking the steps to try to get it started. So hopefully by the end of the year uh, 2017 we have some sort of idea of what the problem is and what we need to do to fix it. Um, a couple things, uh, the Glisson property on the corner of Gun Club and Brownfield Road had been in a couple times about their house flooding. We were able to, uh, K2 went out, we found a sewer line that was put in uh, approximately 10 years ago. We were able to tie them into that line so their house should never have a problem again. Uh, Lease Plumbing did that and they completed it, uh, I believe last week it was completed. Um, we did water terminations. Um, once again, if you're not paying your bill, come in, we'll work with you. But ultimately, we have to collect the money. I mean, it's not to where it's going to get to the point where we let you off the hook. I mean, we'll do what we can to try to help you, um, but you know, it's not fair to everyone else who's paying their bill. So. Don't, we're not we're not handing out free free rides, but if you have a problem, you're backed up. We will work with you to try to put you on a payment plan that you can afford. Um, also, one other thing, the uh, greater uh, sent us a bill for approximately eighty four thousand dollars due to a technical error that occurred. Uh, they actually refunded this money back to us last year, uh, and it was a clerical error. So we just have to give it back. But um, we're looking into that further to find out what that problem was. But I think we, we had uh, our accountant, McClure and Wolf, come down and look at it. And uh, I think we figured out what's going on. But um, any, would you like to add anything about that greater uh, yes. study? As uh, Mr. Scott pointed out, the, the greater uh, Uniontown Joint Public Sewage Authority has, uh, you know, put their engineer, we are working with the engineer for the grader to do a, what's called a soap study. And the first phase of the soap study is basically to go out and locate the, the, the existing manholes and the sizes of the pipes. So that, that portion of the study is completed. Uh, the next portion will be an, uh, a very extensive cleaning uh, and uh, again confirming the sizes of the pipes. And uh, we we've, we've began uh, receiving quotes for, for that work. Uh, as soon as I get those quotes, I certainly will uh, uh, send them to the supervisors for their consideration. Um, but we're going we're gonna to move forward with the study. But the study has already found that there, there are certainly some restrictions in the lines that we all suspect that were there. Uh, but it may be worse than we thought, actually. So, uh, you know, the study is much much needed. It's uh, long overdue in my opinion. Uh, this study is basically an all-encompassing study of North Union, South Union Township, and the City of Union Town, and how all those entities and how the flow works in the system. So this will give us a, a very good planning document to be able to move forward with trying to collect, correct some of the flow issues that the outlying areas are having when all this water gets together in the city. Thank you.
Uh, and that completes my sewage report. Do you guys have anything to add? I'd just like to say in regards to the study that's being done, you know, there's there's been known for years that there exist problems within this system, uh, not just within one township, with a whole system. And finally, we're glad to see that some action is being taken to give some clarity to identify the problem and, and then actually take some action to, to rectify it. Thank you, John. It's going on to number seven, the code enforcement officers report. I have that in my hand. Uh, for the month of September, okay, we have one full-time officer who works 40 hours, the other one works 30 hours on the day. Uh, we had nine letters went out for property repairs. Uh, we had two burning complaints. Uh, we had, in fact, we had both were down at the Huggins Trader Court at the other end of the month. Uh, high grass and weeds, we had seven. Again, it can't be any higher than 10 inches. Unsafe, uh, even officer we had, we were that to one house. We condemn uh, six traders in Huggins Trader Court into the month. Uh, we have one quad complaint. Uh, also, citations issued by our officers during the day was 18. Uh, they also traveled 2,118 miles throughout the township and are part-time. Three officers who work on weekends and in the evenings traveled 2,391 miles, but total 4,509 miles traveled throughout the township. Our officers also gave out some tickets, one no parking ticket, uh, general no parking ticket. We had fire, five fire lane tickets and two handicaps. Uh, that, that finalizes my report. Do you have anything else? Mr. Shepard? No. Mr. Scott? No, sir. Okay. Let's go on now to number eight. Motion to approve minutes of the previous meeting. Do you entertain a motion for that? So moved. Moved by Mr. Scott. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Shepard. Any questions on the motion? Roll we'll call, Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Schiffbar. Yes. yes. Motion carries. Going to item number nine on our agenda. Comments on the agenda items. Do we have any comments from the public? None. Are we going to number ten? The sheepskin trail, Mr. Schiffbar. That's your baby. That's our baby. <laughs> well, that's uh, your idea. Uh, I I'd just like to follow up. Uh, yeah. The trail has been a tremendous success, and and I encourage anybody who uh, uh, who hasn't spent some time on the trail to, to to give it a try, especially before we get into the weather season. Right now, it's uh, it's beautiful out there with the changing color of the leaves and the vegetation. And uh, this Sunday, we are having our brunch uh, at the bridge. Uh, at uh, the park in South Union Township, where the trail leads into the uh, to the park, uh, they'll start at 11 o'clock. Uh, that's this coming Sunday, and uh, uh, we expect a pretty good turnout. The only thing we have to be considered now is uh, the the weather cooperating with us. Uh, just a few other minor things. Uh, what we would like to say, we've had some reported uh, incidents, uh, small incidents involving uh, ATVs or quads, as you say, and, uh, and also some minor vandalism. What, what we would like to do is to uh, uh, remind our, our residents and the users of the trails, if they see something out of the norm taking place, we really would appreciate if they would uh, contact the township. We do have a, uh, I'll give out the number here for a code officer that's on duty. And uh, the number there is 724-323-6009. Uh, that's for our code officer on duty. They can respond uh, to, to an incident or if they see anything. Also, what I uh, encourage our residents to do, if they happen to have a cell phone with them, they can take a picture. Uh, you know, pictures worth a thousand words, as they say. And uh, we, we could do a lot of that, uh, a lot with it if uh, we find or identify a person uh, who might be violating our, our rules and regulations. But uh, other than that, things are going quite well, and uh, uh, we continue to encourage our people, everybody, to try the trail and, and uh, take advantage of uh, this golden opportunity, improve their health, and uh, enjoy the, the fall weather. That's it.
I'd just like to mention one thing. We do have a picture of a quad. I think it happened two weeks ago. It was a blue Yamaha. Is that what it was, Mr. Scott? I believe so. Yeah. Yamaha was a, a little, not real heavy, but an overweight gentleman driving it. We don't have a picture of his face. We have his back and the sides. And if anybody has any idea who it was, appreciate you letting us know. We have it being investigated now, and we're waiting for our tapes to come back. But we do have a picture of a blue Yamaha on the, the side and the back part of the person. A little bit overweight, looks like. Yeah, and one thing, we, we, we right now we do have uh, security cameras uh, on the trail at this time, and we, we're upgrading our, our overall security system. This is a system that has uh, very uh, strong cameras that can take pictures that identify people, and we will be uh, using that or blending that into our security system here on the trail. And if we find somebody violating our rules and regulations, it is the intent of the Board of Supervisors to go after these people and make them pay dearly. Okay. Thank you. Any other Mr. Scott? Uh, one other thing. Um, we do have plenty of parking for the trail. I mean, we have a parking lot at the end of the trail down by uh, the Belmont. We also have parking here at the township, and we have parking up at Hutchinson. Uh, it was brought to my attention, I guess a couple people were parking on the side of Redstone Furnace Road and leaving their car like halfway out in the lane uh, a couple times, but we have plenty of parking, there's no need to, uh, you know, cause an accident or, or get, get hit by a car. Uh, like I said, Hutchison, the township, and also at the other end of the trail, I think there's probably enough parking down there for four or five cars, so try, try to be safe when you're, when you're parking. We have plenty of parking, there's no need to park along the roads. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Going on number 11, it's that time of the year again. Uh, scheduled trick or treat night, or we have figured out October 31st from 6 to 7.30. That's usually our policy, going from 6 to 7.30. I know we did contact North and they're doing it the same night we are. Uh, and we, we do, we asked you if you're going to participate to put your porch light on. Uh, and then we'll have at least three code officers going out along with the supervisors going out. We will ask the state police to help us patrol also. Uh, anything else you like to do, Mr. Scott? No, sir. Mr. Shepard? We'll put something in the paper to remind you of that, too, of that date. October 31st, Tuesday night from 6 to 7.30. Uh, comments from the public? Do you have any comments tonight? None? Okay. Let's go on to number 13, our financial statement, our treasurer, Mr. Shepard. Okay, from our uh, general fund checking, $401,171.30. The general fund investment account, $391,680.78. State fund, $390,838.33. Hydrant fund, $7,133.41. Athletic fund, $6,493.28. Payroll fund. Seven thousand three hundred fifty-one dollars and forty-nine cents. Sheepskin Trail Fund, thirty-two thousand two hundred fifty-six dollars seventy-one cents. The North Union South Union Intergovernmental Board, twenty-two thousand five hundred seventy-seven dollars and forty-five cents. Recycling Fund, thirty-two thousand nine hundred thirty-six dollars and eighty-two cents for a grand total of one million two hundred ninety-two thousand four hundred seventy-nine dollars and fifty-seven cents. And from the sewage department, a, a total for that is two million two hundred and forty-one thousand six dollars sixty-one cents, leading us to a grand total for all three million five hundred six thousand four hundred eighty-six dollars and eighteen cents. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Any anything on that, Mr. Should we okay on that? Everything's fine. Let's go on to the next item. Uh, motion to pay current bills on item number 14. Our check to Mr. Scott. Make a motion to pay the current bills. Uh, from the North Union South Union Intergovernmental Board Fund, $5,350. From the State Fund, $17,245.86. From the Sheepskin Trail Fund, $16,819.54. From the Fire Hydrant Fund, $1,159.66. From the Athletic Fund, $1,995. From the Sewage Fund, $147,224.40. And from the General Fund Checking Account, 
$360,933.30. That will be my motion to pay the current bills. Okay, motion by Mr. Scott. Do we have a second on the motion? I'll second Mr. Scott's so, motion. By Mr. Schiffer. Any questions on the motion? Roll call, Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Schiffer. Yes. Mr. Vernon, yes. Motion carries. It's going on number 15. We have our K2 engineering president, John, over here. John, you have some comments to make for the, for the township? Yes. Um, so the gentleman from the DEP, uh, Bill Kucinich, uh he's a, a one-man show in the DEP, and he's in, responsible for stream bank improvement projects. Uh, he has a very limited budget for the amount for what he can do, but um, he's offered to basically put together the first steps, and he sent uh, my office some information relative to the Redstone Creek flood protection uh, project. Um, the first step in basically doing the analysis is that we are going to need all property owners that that have been affected but not by not only the recent flooding events but those in the past the last time something was done to redstone creek was back in the mid to late 70s uh, when the corps of engineers actually did a project at redstone creek so any affected property owners from that point forward if you have some good documentation i have all the, whether it be industrial commercial or residential those losses need to be tabulated and documented so that a basically a benefit loss scenario can be can be done by the DEP to try to get a capital project in front of the governor's office to do a project for the stream banks. It's not only Redstone. You also anybody that lives along Coal Lick that's been affected by flooding because of backwaters of Redstone. Uh, they also need to be involved in this thing so that we get a, the big picture of the damages that a flood associated with redstone causes within the communities. It doesn't only affect the city. So, I mean, the city's where the bottleneck is with, with the water just as, as it is with the sanitary system, but we need to basically get, if we can correct some problems within the city and get the water moving, that's going to help everybody upstream a lot better. So... Um, I'm going to be working with the supervisors here and hopefully getting this room uh, in an evening so that uh, property owners can come in, pick up the forms, receive some explanation on how to fill out the forms, but the more information we, we have relative to damages, the better it's going to be for the whole community. Anything else? I do have one other item that's not associated with that. The projects down uh, that were bid out for the storm sewer, mortar and excavating was actually issued their notice to proceed on September the 5th. We're a month into that, into a 90-day project now. We actually sent them a letter today requesting a schedule from them and a start date and how they anticipate completing this work in 60 days now instead of nine. I also talked to Mr. Andrew French. He was supposed to contact them also today. Uh, he sent them a certified letter. That's so. good. We're going to be in wintertime. We're yeah, winter before we get in, yes. into it. Okay, that, that concludes That's the it. engineering report. That's all I have. Okay, we'll go on down to number 16. Our solicitor from Davis & Davis, uh, Jim Davis, please. Well, at the outset, let me again congratulate the supervisors on the Sheepskin Trail, the, the overwhelming success of the Sheepskin Trail. You know, I'm always impressed with the forward thinking here in South Union Township. You guys are always embracing the future. I wish other municipalities would uh, follow your lead and hope that they will. But this Sheepskin Trail, uh, I know you looked at it as, as a very positive impact on the community, and I think it's even been a, had a greater and more positive impact than even you, you three could have anticipated. So I want to commend you on that. Uh, in terms of what's going on as far as the legal work that we're doing, uh, I do want to report that the appeal from the denial of the zoning certificate uh, by the zoning hearing board of the tower access request for the cell tower, that appeal was denied by Judge Cudero and the decision of the zoning hearing board was affirmed. So I was pleased with that because, as you know, the supervisors uh, 
directed me to participate in that litigation. Our firm did participate. We attended and participated in the hearing before the Zoning Hearing Board, and we also uh, filed an appeal brief and participated in the argument before Judge Cadero. We'll see if Tower Access chooses to appeal to Commonwealth Court, but uh, I was pleased with uh, the result that we have uh, achieved thus far. Yeah, in, lay, in a layperson's term, they affirm meant that they agree with the Zoning Board. In a layperson's they term, the they zoning. agree with the Zoning Hearing Board, and they disagreed with Tower Access. I think that's the, that's the plain language uh, right. version. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Anything else from any of our supervisors? No, sir. Okay, then item number 17 is Mr. Scott's favorite motion. I'll make a motion that we adjourn at 427. Yeah. You took Mr. Yeah. Frank Houser's place on that. Then we have a motion. We have a second on that. I'll second. I'll take, I'll go ahead. Mr. No, 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 I'll second Mr. Mr. Scott's motion to that. Any, any questions? Roll call. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Shipfire? Yes. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. I'm going to sit here and get back. I'm going to sit here and get back. I'm going to sit here and get back.